Hello and welcome to my new video. Today I'm gonna talk about electroconvulsive therapy for depression. Um, I'm going to talk about my personal experience, about what it, what it was like to go through this procedure, what results I had with it and what were the side effects. Uh, I'm also going to talk about um, the experiences of people that I know personally who also went through this uh, procedure and uh, in the end I'm gonna talk about uh, the general statistics in the population so you could uh, understand what are the odds of uh, you getting better after doing ECT and what uh, what are the side effects and what are the odds of you getting some serious long-term damage. On the internet there are a lot of very different reviews. Some people are saying how wonderful this procedure is and some are saying that it's pure evil and should be banned. Uh, while I think that it is great uh, when people share their treatment stories, uh, I al also think that when we're talking about uh, a topic as complex as electroconvulsive therapy, it is very important to get out of the bubble of your own personal experience, of your own emotions, and present things as objectively as possible. And this is exactly what I'm, what I'm gonna do today in this video. So first I'm gonna talk about um, my own experience with it. Um, several years ago I had a relapse of depression and it was heavy and um, my life was completely destroyed again. Uh, I didn't have much success with uh, the drugs, so I decided to get this procedure. Um, if you're interested in my uh, whole depression story, um, I will put a link in the description below. Um, I didn't care much about the side effects, because um, my depression just uh, ruined my life completely. I, I felt like I had nothing to lose. So, what is this procedure like? So you go into a special room for the ECT, you lie down, um, the anesthesiologist uh, puts a mask on your face and you just fall asleep very fast. Um, then you wake up and after waking up I always felt uh, very weird, uh, very confused. Um, I knew that I was in a hospital, I knew what procedure was I doing, but I didn't know my name, I didn't remember much about myself, I didn't remember my childhood, I didn't remember my whole life. And so, yeah, it was very strange. And then the hospital person takes you back to your uh, hospital room and uh, every time when I return to my room after the procedure. I could not remember the names of um, the other patients in that room and I just didn't remember anything about them. So it was, it was pretty confusing, but it's not too bad. And uh, after some time after the procedure, the memories uh, come back to you. Uh, so if the procedure was in the morning, then by lunchtime I would remember everything about myself and everything about everybody. So the memories return pretty quickly. <clears throat> and basically that's all there is to it. It's not particularly scary, it's not painful at all. But it's a fairly comfortable procedure. I did that twice a week for several weeks. I did a total of 18 procedures, which is more than average, usually is from 6 to 12. Uh, so uh, what were the results? 
I had some improvement, I had some success with it, but it was less than I expected. I just felt a tiny bit better, but it was not enough to make me well, it was not enough to make me functional again, and uh, it was not enough for me to get my life back, unfortunately. Um, so, what were the side effects? So first, um, I had a little bit of memory loss. I didn't forget much. I just forgot maybe a couple of events that happened uh, right around the ECT. Uh, it was not debilitating at all. I didn't care about that couple of days that I forgot. Um, I remember the entirety of my childhood, my whole life, so the long-term memory loss didn't happen. I don't really have any long-term side effects, I don't have any cognitive damage, nothing like that. Another side effect uh, was uh, olfactory hallucinations, uh, which means several days after I finished with my ECT, I started to smell things that were not there. I constantly had the feeling that just something is rotting somewhere. It was very unpleasant smell, and especially it was difficult for me uh, to eat because all the food just uh, smelled disgusting. And it was unpleasant, but it wasn't particularly scary. It lasted for about seven to eight days, and then it just went away. So again, um, uncomfortable, but not a big deal. In general, I don't regret that I did this procedure. A little improvement with no long-term side effects seems like a good deal to me. So now I'm gonna talk about the results of ECT of people that I personally know. At the time when I was very sick, I used to spend uh, a lot of time in, in a mental hospital and uh, I met a lot of other patients uh, with depression. Uh, I got to know their stories uh, and um, I personally known nine people with depression who underwent electroconvulsive therapy. The one thing that we all have in, in common is that none of them had any long-term damage. The side effects from the procedure were transient. So a couple of them didn't have any uh, positive change at all with ECT, a couple of them did have some moderate improvement and three of the people that I know had wonderful results with it. They managed to uh, get into a full remission as a result of electroconvulsive therapy. I witnessed that myself and, uh, and it was just mind-blowing for me to see how a very, very sick person can get uh, completely well in a matter of a couple of weeks. So now let's talk about general statistics. Uh, what are the odds of you getting better and what are the odds of getting some serious side effects? Uh, first let's talk about effectiveness. The success rate of electroconvulsive therapy is more than 50%. It's by far the most effective option for people with treatment-resistant depression. I found a couple of studies that confirm that. I will link them in the description. And uh, there are many more studies about it as well. If you are interested, you can look it up yourself. If ST wasn't effective, no one would be doing it. Um, the doctors that recommended it to me wanted to help me. Uh, medical help is socialized in my country. They had um, no financial interests. Um, so now let's talk side effects. First thing you gotta keep in mind uh, is 
the more you get this procedure, the more chances are for you to get some serious side effects from it. Now let's talk about the side effects that most of the patients get, uh, the side effects that are most common. And uh, the most uh, common thing is uh, losing, mo uh, losing memory of some events that happened uh, right around the time you get this treatment. Um, there might be uh, also some side effects from anesthesia, maybe some temporary um, nausea, maybe weakness and things like that. And uh, for most patients, uh, the side effects are temporary. Uh, they go away um, s several weeks after your last treatment. And um, I found uh, some studies uh, that confirm that. I will link them in the description if you're interested. Uh, now let's talk about the possibility of some serious long-term side effects. Um, there are some reports of people having long-term cognitive damage from ECT. Some people say that they forgot uh, the important events that happened in their life, maybe some childhood memories and things like that. Some people say that they have hard time of forming short-term uh, memories even long after the ECT is done. Some people say that ECT lowered their IQ and I don't think that these people are lying. I think that that is the reality in some cases. It definitely does not happen to the majority of patients but it happens to some. And you've got to really, really know and understand this. You've got to know what you're getting yourself into. You've got to be sure you have a damn good reason to take this risk. So these things uh, happened more often to people who did ECT a uh, long, long time ago. And the signs have moved forward and it happens uh, much less frequently right now. But it's still possible. So n now that I'm done with the facts, I'm gonna tell you uh, my personal opinion on how to decide whether you should or should not get ECT. First of all, I think that before getting ECT, you've got to try everything else. And by everything else, I not only mean the meds and uh, therapy, um, these are the only things that uh, doctors will advise you to do, but I think you should also try other therapies. You should change your diet, you should try supplements, you should try light therapy, you should try meditation, you definitely should try exercise. Uh, first try cardio exercise and if that doesn't work, try some yoga. Um, also try meditation. Uh, try TMS, which is transcranial magnetic stimulation. It's not uh, as effective, but it's completely safe. For me personally, diet, supplements and uh, exercise were uh, much more effective than TMS, ECT and uh, SSRIs combined. So you should not write off natural treatments. Uh, I already have video about uh, diet and supplements on my channel and I will make videos on other natural treatments in the future. And also there's plenty information on all kinds of treatments of depression on the internet. And um, try all of that first. Don't write it off. If your depression is mild, if it doesn't really impact your professional and uh, personal life all that much, then I think um, you shouldn't do ECT. It's just not worth the risk. So now let's talk about severe depression. In my personal opinion, if you have severe depression and you've tried everything else and it didn't help you, then I think you should absolutely try ECT. Because with ECT your odds are better. Severe untreated depression ruins your whole life, 
almost 100% of the time. And if you disagree with that, then you just don't know, you don't understand what severe depression is. When I was severely depressed, not only I was in so much pain every day that I wanted to die, but I also couldn't function. Normally, I'm not a dumb person, but when I was severely depressed, uh, I was a moron. I could barely even read a newspaper. I just uh, remember trying to read and uh, I would uh, read one sentence and feel like, oh, I'm too tired, I gotta lie down. And then I lie down and I read the same sentence and then I'm tired again and... I mean, you get the picture. So, depression g definitely gave me cognitive damage. ECT didn't, but depression did. Uh, so, with ECT, you got more than 50% chance of getting better and you got a small percent chance that you will get a long-term cognitive damage. I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything. I'm not trying to say that it is completely safe. It is not completely safe. It is risky. I just think that if your only options are either re uh, living with a severe untreated depression or getting an ECT, then ECT um, gives you better odds. One more important thing that I want to mention. I think it is wise to do however, however many treatments of ECT you need to get better and then keep yourself in remission by uh, doing other treatments. I mean, uh, cardio exercise, uh, meditation, diet, supplements, pills, whatever you need. And only if all of that fails for some reason, uh, only then choose uh, the long-term ECT maintenance therapy because uh, Remember, the more, the more ECT you do, the more chance you have of getting some serious side effects. If your depression is kind of average, so it's not mild, but it's not really severe, then, well, that is a gray area. And uh, it's on you to decide whether your depression is bad enough to justify uh, the risks of ECT. That's all that I have for today. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you did a CT, let me know about your experience. Uh, hit the like button and it's gonna make this video easier to find for people who need this information. Subscribe if you want to and uh, as always, thank you for the view.